Friday, January 3rd, 2020, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So is the final battle for the petrodollar on? And uh, this battle, unfortunately, might be a real uh, kinetic conflict. I don't want to say the W word. Um, before I start, I'd like to say I don't take sides. Uh, I'm an observer from outside. I try to work out what's going to happen financially, monetarily, to try to help people protect their uh, savings. That's what I'm trying to do myself. For me, um, my uh, background, of course, is in finance. I worked for 25 years uh, in finance, started out in Geneva, Switzerland for a small private bank and worked in the city of London for uh, various uh, brokerage houses uh, for a big bank as well. So that's my experience. I'm trying to uh, give you uh, a rundown on things uh, market-wise, economically, geopolitically, how I would have done to my institutional clients uh, back in the city. And hopefully that will continue to be a value to you. Um, anyway, <laughs> the title today, of course, is uh, the final battle for the petrodollar on. And why final? Well, uh, many of you might know uh, the uh, story of uh, General Wesley Clark when he went to the Pentagon right after 9-11. And uh, one of his friends uh, called him in and said, you need to uh, uh, look at this, this memo. And uh, <laughs> it was a memo saying that uh, they were planning to invade seven different countries. And one of those countries on that list, of course, was Iran. Uh, <laughs> that was, of course, the neocon plan for the project for the new American century. Uh, that's been almost 20 years now, and Iran still hasn't been invaded, or there hasn't been a war with Iran. And wh what's it got to do with the petrodollar? Well, uh, it has almost everything to do with it, because a lot of the oil that flows out of Saudi Arabia, and Saudi Arabia, of course, is at the heart of the petrodollar. They're the, uh, the country that uh, agreed upon with Kissinger, for Richard Nixon back in the early 70s that uh, Saudi Arabia would only sell their oil in dollars. So that was the deal. That's what, what, what's kept the demand for dollars all those years, even though uh, Richard Nixon took uh, the dollar off the gold standard or the Bretton Woods system standard in 1971. So they needed to find a way for other countries to... Uh, have a reason to have dollars and accumulate dollars to keep the dollar propped up. Uh, and that was through oil because every country needs oil nowadays or maybe not so much nowadays. People are diversifying into other energy sources, but it's still very important. Uh, and it hasn't only been Iran now that's challenging uh, the petrodollar. And how do you challenge the petrodollar? Well, you sell uh, your oil to other countries in a currency other than the US dollar. You sell oil to China in yuan or even gold. You sell oil to the Russians in rubles and so on. Uh, we've seen in the past <laughs> uh, uh, proof that uh, they will go after people or countries that try to challenge the petrodollar. Look at Saddam Hussein. Uh, prior to the invasion of Iraq, uh, Saddam Hussein decided to sell a lot of his oil uh, from Iraq to the EU in euros. Then you had Gaddafi in Libya who decided to start uh, an African uh, currency backed by gold to sell uh, his oil as well in other currencies other than the dollar to his neighbor, neighbors in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, now we're seeing Iran as well. And why do I say they're challenging the petrodollar? Well, interesting that I saw an article about a week ago, and I thought to myself, and I didn't make a video about it though, but I thought, wow, this is a challenge to the petrodollar. So I took this story from CNN, uh, talking about how China, Russia, and Iran hold joint naval drills 
in Gulf of Oman. When I saw that, I thought to myself, wow, that's a big challenge to the petrodollar because uh, the Americans, uh, they feel uh, that they're in charge of that region. Gulf of Oman, the Persian Gulf, uh, they're the ones who safeguard uh, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The U.S. is like their police policeman. Uh, and uh, this is, uh, uh, when I saw this, wow, this is uh, another challenge to the petrodollar. Do I read CNN all the time? No, I just took this because I found this story. I was trying to find the story and I got the CNN story. So don't worry about uh, me uh, reading CNN all the time. So it says here, China, Russia, and Iran begin a four-day joint military exercise in the Indian Ocean and Gulf of Oman on Friday amid ongoing friction in the economically important region between Tehran and Washington. The Gulf of Oman has been a focal point of geopolitical tensions in 2019 after two oil tankers were attacked in the narrow strait in June by an identified party. The U.S. blamed Iran for the attack, but Tehran denied the allegations. Then in July, Iran detained the British oil tanker, the Stena Impero, for two months. The vessels planned to leave Iran's Chabahar port in the Gulf of Oman before being deployed across the seas and north of the Indian Ocean. Second Rear Admiral Gola, Golam Reza Tahani said earlier, according to Iran state-run press TV, Tahani said the exercise will cover 17,000 square kilometers and consist of, consist of various tactical exercises, which include target practice and rescuing ships from assaults and fires. Among the objectives of this exercise are improving the security of international maritime trade, countering maritime piracy and terrorism, uh, exchanging uh, information regarding rescue operations and operational and tactical experience, Tahani said. So uh, that comment by Tahani sounds almost like a, an American official making a comment of why they're holding exercises there. So in my opinion, that's like a challenge to the American supremacy, to the Pax Americana. Uh, so I think that was a significant story uh, back on the 27th of December. Um, and is it any coincidence that we've seen uh, things uh, kick off in the Middle East, especially in Iraq? And uh, now the Iranians uh, are being blamed for that, of course. Uh, and now, overnight, um, the Americans are claiming that they assassinated Soleimani. Uh, who is Soleimani? Well, he's the uh, head of the uh, Quds, which is a military arm of the Iranian uh, uh, armed forces. He's the... Uh, head of that that cuts overseas and he was in iraq so iran's top military leader killed in u.s airstrike uh, pentagon accused qasem soleimani of orchestrating attacks on u.s forces in iraq so am i saying <laughs> that what's happening in iraq is not real it's a false flag no but it's interesting that it's kicked off after uh, those joint naval exercises by Iran, China, and Russia. Don't forget, China is the country that the U.S. is currently uh, trying to negotiate a trade deal with. Yes, they've, it looks like they've gotten phase one done, that they're going to sign the phase one uh, deal on the 15th of January. Is that going to happen now? We'll have to see. Uh, don't forget as well that the whole trade deal was supposed to have been signed March 1st, 2019. That's uh, my take on what's going on. Of course, we need to uh, wait and see uh, for more information uh, from the United States, also from Iran. And it will be interesting to see how China and Russia react to this. Uh, 
The FT, of course, says Soleimani assassination risks all-out war between U.S. and Iran. Um, liquidation of Quds commander takes Trump presidency into dangerous territory. Um, the problem I have is an all-out war against Iran could be an all-out war against other countries like China and Russia. Uh, after all, those countries uh, belong to what's called the Shanghai Cooperation Agreement. Uh, similar to NATO, so we'll have to see. Uh, so how have the markets reacted overnight? Uh, you would have thought normally with the prospect of war that stock markets would do well, but they're not doing well. You would have thought the dollar would be doing well, uh, but actually it's not really moving that much in terms of the dollar index. So let's see what's going on. Uh, it's 8.05 a.m. London time. We've got spot gold up almost 1% or $15 at 154360 So it's interesting how technical analysis and events kind of coincide because looking at the gold chart, I'm not surprised that we're moving higher because we broke out of that uh, falling wedge. So technically it's doing what it's doing, but I can bet you in the mainstream media, CNBC, Bloomberg, Fox News, whatever, or Fox Business, uh, people are going to say gold is up on the back of the Iranian situation. Uh, but uh, maybe so, but uh, <laughs> it's only confirming the technical and fundamental picture for gold. Uh, am I happy? Would I be really happy if gold went through the moon and we have a major war? No, of course not. Um, I don't want to see that. Uh, be as it may, though, it looks pretty good at the moment, the precious metals. Silver uh, is up just over 1%, so outperforming gold slightly. It's at 18.21, up 20 cents. Uh, the Dow future is down 270 points, or just under 1% at 28,600. S&P is down 32, also 1%. And the uh, NASDAQ 100 future is down 1% or 94 points at 87.77. So currency-wise, uh, sterling has continued to uh, come off. We, we saw a rebound earlier this week. We're now at uh, just below 131, down a third of a percent. Just show you a quick chart here of sterling or cable. Uh, for those who think some, that technical analysis is not really useful, uh, I've been following this channel here in Sterling. We broke below it. We tried to rally back up and look where it failed, <laughs> right on the channel, on the lower trend line. And now it's coming back down. The euro is a little weaker, uh, down uh, 0.14% at 11157 And the dollar is down almost two-thirds of a percent against the yen, just below 108. Uh, dollars up slightly against the Chinese yuan at 697. Crude oil, of course, has benefited from uh, the uh, instability and the assassination of the Iranian uh, military official. Uh, we've got WTI up 3%, just below $63. We've got Brent up three and a quarter. The other thing that's happened that's quite convenient for the bond market is that we're seeing a, a so-called flight to safety of treasuries. We, we're now 10 year yield is almost down to 180. It's at 182, down a, about six basis points. So very interesting start to the new year, I guess. Uh, 2020 has started literally with a big bang. Uh, let's hope it doesn't get any worse, the situation geopolitically, militarily, um, but uh, let's keep an eye on it. If you enjoyed this video, uh, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Please share this video far and wide. And you can also follow me on Twitter, BitChute, Steemit, and DTube. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.